Hey there, Alethea Church. I hope you are doing well uh, on this Thanksgiving week, whatever day it is you get to tune in and watch this video with your gospel community. Sunday, the main thing that we talked about was godliness with contentment is great gain. Um, we looked a little bit back over the topic we've discussed about godliness and how it's been emphasized for the last several chapters in the book of 1 Timothy. And Paul says that we are to take godliness and combine it with contentment. If we do that, that it gives us incredibly great gain in our lives. And I described contentment along the lines of food and how we all understand the pain of hunger. And are, are, I ask, myself, ask you, are you trying to fill your belly with donuts or with a real meal? And so often with things like social media and our digital world, we find ourselves trying to fill our desires uh, with sugary substances rather than uh, meat and potatoes and vegetables. And the Bible clearly says those things are our relationship with God, um, God's word, and we can actually be content in this life. Um, and the problem is we are striving to be content with things that we don't necessarily need in order to be content. And Paul, echoing the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, says all you actually need to be content in this life is food and clothing. I know a big, huge stretch for us as Americans, but that is what scripture says in more than one place. Um, we also talked about the love of money being uh, the root of all kind of evil. Remember, it is not money that is the root of all kind of evil. It is the love of money that is the root of all kind of evil. And uh, we talked about the four different categories when it comes to people and money. We talked about the rich righteous, rich unrighteous, poor righteous, and poor unrighteous. Um, when it comes to money, having a lot of money is not necessarily good or bad, and having a little bit of money is not necessarily good or bad. Our job as Christians is to steward the resources that we have been given by God. That, that is our responsibility. And if we steward our resources, whether they're big or whether they're little, um, then we can be pleasing to God and live a godly life um, no matter how much we actually have. I summed everything up by saying, in the end, you've got to realize you can't do contentment. There is no way to, um, there's no five simple steps to becoming content. Contentment is something that has to be learned uh, by trial and by fire and by testing. And this is what Paul says in Philippians 4, 11 through 13. You'll cover it in your questions. Um, and so uh, one of the big final statements that I said is that true contentment means embracing the Lord's will in every aspect of his providence simply because it is his providence. Realize that your circumstances are your circumstances. And the more you embrace that they are, you are in those circumstances due to the divine hand of providence from God, um, that will serve you and help you to become more content. That will help you to learn to become content. Um, I love this quote by Sinclair Ferguson. Christian contentment, therefore, is the direct fruit of having no higher ambition than to belong to the Lord and to be totally at his disposal in the place he appoints at the time he chooses with the provision he is pleased to make. And I encourage you at the end, uh, how you can start learning to become content is by uh, practicing the prescription God gives us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, uh, giving thanks uh, no matter our circumstances, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Love you guys. Have a great week. Have a great Thanksgiving.